The Basics of Concrete by Jeremy Jocelyn. What is concrete? Concrete is made up of four main ingredients, cement, sand, aggregates, and water. Concrete has been used since the time of the Romans. Concrete is always hardening. The book states it takes 28 days to fully harden, but as concrete sits, it remains hydrating. The first ingredient in concrete is cement, or otherwise known as Portland cement. Cement is a mixture of lime, iron, silica, and alumina. There are five types of cement. Most commonly used is type 1, and most U.S. producers produce a mixture of type 1 and 2. The next ingredients of concrete are aggregates and water. Aggregates make up roughly 75% of concrete. Um, the size and shape of the aggregates matter. Rougher aggregates create better bonding with concrete and also fill voids better. Newer lightweight porous aggregates can make lightweight concrete. When using water with concrete, make sure to use clean water. If it's drinkable, it's suitable for concrete. There are various mineral products used to substitute Portland cement, and they all come with different advantages. Fly ash, silica fume, natural pole zins, and blast furnace slag can all be added to increase strength and workability and decrease permeability of concrete. Admixtures can also be added to concrete. Admixtures are mixed ingredients other than the four main ingredients and they're used to alter properties in many different ways. Air retaining, water reducing, high range water reducing, accelerating, workability, shrinkage reducing, corrosion inhibitors, freeze protection, extended set control, and color agents are all admixtures. Making and placing concrete. Several things determine the quality of concrete. Clean sound ingredients. Mixing in the correct proportions, handling wet concrete properly, and letting concrete cure carefully under controlled conditions. Proportioning concrete mixtures is very important. The water to cement weight ratio should be about 45 to 60 percent. The water to cement ratio determines workability and strength. More water, more workable but less strength. Less water, less workable, but more strength. The consistency can normally be tested with a slump test. And often, large mixed plants control consistency pretty well. Handling and placing concrete is also very important. Concrete is a slurry, so it's important to not move it too much to avoid segregation, meaning the separation of aggregates and cements and sand. Also, when placing concrete, it is important to consolidate it, or otherwise remove voids and get it between all of the reinforcing. Letting concrete cure is next step. Hydration must occur. It's a fact that the Hoover Dam is still hydrating today. Avoid dehydration, freezing, and curing before placement. Dehydration or curing before placement is caused usually by hot weather, and freezing can also disrupt hydration. Foam work is used to support the concrete slurry. It also helps with hydration, keeping out the elements. 
It must be cleanly removed so damage does not occur. Usually farm work takes up 50% or more of the cost of concrete construction. Precast was developed for this reason. Reinforcing. Reinforcing is very important to concrete construction. Concrete is all compression strength. It has no tensile strength. Reinforcing adds tensile strength. Steel can be used to reinforce because it's very compatible with concrete. It does not corrode and it is affected by weather about the same as concrete. Steel bars for reinforcement are also known as rebar. Size or diameters come in eighth inch intervals. Bars are made to ASTM standards ranging from 40,000 to 120,000 PSI. Corrosion resistant bars can be used in areas where there are lots of salts that are present. Woven wire fabric can also be used as an alternative to save on labor, usually used in slab on grade. Fabrication and erection of bars. For the fabrication and erection of bars, the engineer makes structural drawings which are turned into shop drawings for the reinforcing fabricator. The fabricator cuts, bends, and organizes pieces for a project. Reinforcement is wired together for temporary hold until concrete cures around bars. Then concrete transfers the load between bars instead of the wire. In some instances, bars are held together by welds or sleeve splices. Reinforcing in simple and continuous concrete beams. Compression and tensile forces in a concrete beam reach their max in the middle. In a perfect world, the best way to control the stress would to be to place reinforcement that follows the stress arches. Instead, a rectangular arrangement is used as a substitute. In the rectangular arrangement, consists of bottom bars that are hooked at each end and stirrups which loop around the bottom bars. Bars are held up in place by chairs and wire. In a continuous concrete beam, top bars are used. Continuous concrete beams are stressed in the middle span, the same as simple concrete beams, but reinforcement must be used at the top over supports, and stirrups are still used. Reinforcing is also used in structural concrete slabs. Reinforcement in a single way concrete slab is similar to a large concrete beam with the added bars perpendicular to prevent parallel cracking. In two-way slab action, there is reinforcement placed equally in both directions. Two-way slab action are relatively square and more cost effective. Reinforcing in concrete columns is also important. Larger reinforcement in concrete columns is usually placed vertically. A smaller reinforcement in concrete columns is placed horizontally to prevent outward buckling. The inner core of concrete prevents inward buckling. Circle arrangements for concrete columns are usually more economical. Spiral tied columns are more effective against extreme and dynamic loads. Often, concrete columns are assembled on the ground and moved into place for more efficiency. Concrete can also be reinforced by fibrous reinforcing. Fibrous reinforcing is composed of glass, steel, or polypropylene. Microfiber reinforcing is usually added in low dosages to reduce plastic shrinkage cracking. Macrofiber protects against plastic shrinkage and also long-term cracking. It can be used to replace steel in concrete slabs. Concrete creep can affect concrete in a long-term period of time. Under loads or its own weight, concrete will shorten over time. The rule of thumb for concrete building frames is 1 16th of an inch every 10 feet of building height.
pre-stressing. Pre-stressing is a system used to make concrete beams support more of a load. Pre-stressing takes off tension forces of concrete, usually supported by high strength cold drawn steel wires. Pre-stressing is accomplished in two different ways. Pre-tensioning, where the wires are stretched before pouring and then cut after the concrete is cured to create a stress. And post-tensioning, wires are stretched after pouring and usually the concrete is poured in place and then tension is put on with hydraulic pumps. Cutting concrete, stone, and masonry. Cutting concrete, stone, and masonry is very important in the concrete construction industry. In pre-industrial times, hand tools and sand slurry were used to cut concrete. Now diamond tools are used. Diamond tools are made of industrial diamonds that are mostly synthetic. Diamond tools make cutting concrete precise. Long spans and sight cast concrete. Impressive concrete spans have been achieved well before reinforcing. The Romans domed roof over the Pantheon spans 150 feet in diameter. Today, concrete is still used to span distances because of structural forms that work entirely because of compression. Designing economical site cast concrete buildings is also important in the con concrete construction industry. The three things that make up the cost in a concrete building frame are concrete, reinforcing steel, and formwork. Formwork usually costs the most. Making simplified and repetitive concrete structures make construction more economical. Site cast concrete and the building codes. Concrete is inherently fire resistant, meeting a lot of building codes. Usually concrete is adequate enough to classify as type one. In buildings with higher fire resistance standards, slabs can either be thickened or applying fireproof material to the lower surfaces of floors. Some newer building codes are focused on the strength of joints between floors and columns to resist seismic loads. 